Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech. Today we are going to take a look at all of the changes with accessibility in iOS 17. And that voice doesn't sound exactly like me, but it is part of personal voice, which is a new feature in accessibility this year. If we go down to accessibility, scroll to the bottom, you'll see personal voice. Personal voice is personalized based off 150 different phrases, takes some time to record, and then takes a couple days using the neural engine to compute what your voice should sound like. It's not perfect and you can type whatever you want using live speech to actually use your own voice to talk to others. So maybe you're on the verge of losing your voice. You just want a recording of maybe what you sound like. This is a way you can actually keep track of that. And once you've recorded it and it's completed, go into it, it will make you verify with face ID or your passcode, and you have the option to export your voice recordings or delete it entirely. So you can recreate this over and over if you don't like the way it sounds. Like I said, it does take a long time to use though, and it will share across devices and allow apps to actually use it as well if you want it to. If we go back, you'll see we have live speech. Personal voice uses live speech to actually speak without using your personal voice or your regular voice and instead uses what you type to communicate with others. If we go to live speech, you'll see we have live speech. It's enabled. If I go to favorite phrases, you can see the couple that I started off the video with. I had to spell it a little bit different to get the sort of phonetics correct, but you'll see it says, hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolo Space Tech. Today, we're going to take a look at all the changes with accessibility in iOS 17. You can add a phrase within this live voice and you can have it say whatever you want. This is a video about accessibility in iOS 17 on YouTube. And once you save this, you'll be able to repeat this. We'll tap on it here and then you can change it. You can add a ton of different ones to your favorite phrases as well. Triple tap the power sleep wake button. It pops open, go to live speech, and then you can have it say whatever you want. You also have the keyboard option. So if we tap on this, it says this is a video about accessibility in iOS 17 on YouTube. This is a video about accessibility in iOS 17 on YouTube. We'll do that one more time. This is a video about accessibility in iOS 17 on YouTube. It doesn't sound exactly like me, but it gets the overall idea across. Again, you can go into the keyboard and type to speak. I can just say the word hi, hi. or hello. hello, and whatever you want as you're speaking to someone else. This is really nice to be able to use if you're maybe in a situation where you can't use your own voice. If we go back, you also have the option to change the voice. So if you don't want to use a personalized voice, you have a bunch of different options here and they're all named as well. And there's different ones for different languages or sort of sounds throughout the world. We have English in South Africa. You have to download each one and then you can play Hi, them. I'm Siri. Hi, I'm Siri. And then you can change it based on what you'd actually like. So there's a ton of different options here that will really help whoever wants to use this. You've got Joelle. And again, it takes a while to download. Hello, my name is Joelle. I am an American English voice. The next new feature isn't necessarily an accessibility feature, but something I thought I'd mention. It has to do with using your phone regularly and using it too close to your face. There's actually a notification for this if you want to turn it on. It's under your settings and then screen time. And there's an option for screen distance, which says reduce eye strain. Once enabled, it says to help reduce eye strain and the risk of myopia in children, screen distance will alert you when you hold an iPhone or iPad with face ID too close for an extended period of time. While this is not really an accessibility feature, it is something to help you out and reduce eye strain overall. So it kind of can be in that category as well, but you can disable this or enable it as you choose. One of the standout features of iOS 7 accessibility this year is called assistive access. It allows you to fully customize the interface, making it easier to press buttons because they're much larger. Instead of having small buttons or small touch zones here, it makes them much larger if you need a little extra help with motor skills or just need larger icons altogether. If we go into settings and then we go to our accessibility, scroll to the bottom, we have assistive access. Within assistive access, we have our options for applications. This is fully customizable in a row or grid pattern, and then we can add applications as we see fit. Within manage apps, if we want to add photos, just press the little plus button there, and then we can include shared albums or just hit continue.
We also have the option of all of our different apps as well. So maybe we want to add podcasts. We'll add podcasts also. Scroll back up to the top. I think that's good enough. We'll go back. And we also have options for things such as wallpaper, allow volume buttons, show time on lock screen. Within wallpaper, we can choose a photo or a different background if we want to. You also have Siri options and passcode settings. If we go to the top and tap on start assistive access, it will make us put in a separate passcode for this. I've just set it to 1234 for the demo here, and it takes a moment to enter assistive access. To get out of assistive access, it will let us know, but you triple click the power sleep wake button. We'll give it a second. It takes a moment to go into assistive access, and then it will give us an all new interface that makes it easier to use. You can see we have six different icons, music, camera, podcast, photos, and messages and calls. Within music, you'll see that we have huge icons now to go into different music. So if we want to go into this one, we have music playing, the volume slider is much larger or smaller, and it's much easier to press. Tap on it and it stops playing. You can add favorites here later on if you want. Tap on back, and if we want to go into podcasts, it's a similar story. We can go through our different podcasts. We have larger touch icons. And again, if we go into camera, we have a big button to take a photo if we want to do that. And it just makes it much easier to navigate and go into different things such as notifications, calls, and messages. If we go into photos, you can see different photos. It's easier to get into. And there's just a big back button in order to navigate. If we go into messages, within a message, we have a large text area and we have the option for an emoji only keyboard. So we can quickly go through different emojis and then send those. Also, we have the option for video selfie. So you can leave a video message, making it easier if you want to just use that instead of typing everything out. It's a much easier interface and much simpler if maybe either you're a new user or you need a little bit extra help with some of the touch areas. I think this is a great addition to iOS 17. We'll triple click to get out of assistive access. And again, we'll put in our password and then it takes a moment to exit. Point and speak is a new accessibility feature that's available on specific iPhones that will identify what you're pointing at with your finger using the camera on the iPhone and tell you what it is. This helps with people who are visually impaired or maybe just want to know what something is that they're pointing at. This will help identify that. Now this does require specific hardware as it uses the LiDAR sensor to sense depth. So you'll need one of the pro phones from the iPhone 12 and newer. So 12 pro 12 pro max, 13 pro 13 pro max, 14 pro or 14 pro max. And I would imagine 15 pro and 15 pro max. This is enabled by going into magnifier. Then under your settings, you want to make sure that within your settings, you have detection mode. Once you have detection mode, you can go over and enable that. That's this little icon here where it's sort of a square that's segmented. And then here we have point and speak. That's this new option here. So we have our typical ones, text detection, door detection, people detection. But if we enable point and speak, it will recognize where our hand is and what we're pointing at. So let me turn the volume up and I'll show you how this works. I'll bring in an iPad, which has a screenshot from iOS security response 16.5.1 C. Let's go ahead and see if it recognizes it. Hold your hand and finger parallel to your iPhone. iOS security response one six five one. To learn more, please visit https colon slash slash support dot two hundred one thousand two hundred twenty four. And it recognized what I was pointing at. So if I bring my hand into again, move to iOS rid beta updates, iOS security response. So it's telling me what it is. It's a little bit tricky to use and hopefully it gets better by the time it's released to the public, but it recognizes what you're pressing on. For example, Apple showed it in front of a microwave. If I bring in my Apple keyboard, let's see if it can detect specific letters. So again, here's the keyboard. Hand detect capital G, Ca capital G, Ca -ca capital G, Ca capital G, capital J, capital N. So you'll see it jumps around quite a bit. Hopefully they fix this a little bit better in the future, but with more practice, it will get better. And the first betas were really slow with this. As we get closer to a final release, it will get much better, but it's a great way to identify things, whether that's a microwave, a timer or something else. Once iOS 17 launches to the public, there'll be a new journaling app after the first couple of updates. Apple previewed this at WWDC and they'll add a shortcut that helps with cognitive disabilities 
called Remember This. It will create a visual diary in notes for easy reflection and reference. So that's something I haven't found yet within shortcuts and it's called Remember This. So if you search for it, I haven't found anything yet, but Remember This will help you remember those things. Let's spell it correctly here help you remember different things so that it can create sort of a visual diary, like I mentioned. So we should see that most likely it will be in that new journaling app. Initially, Apple said it would be in the notes app. So either way, this will be something they add for shortcuts. In iOS 17, Apple has enhanced voice control. Within settings, if we're using voice control under accessibility and then voice control, if we enable this, we can use our voice to do different things on the iPhone. However, they've made this better if you have words that sound alike. They've added phonetic suggestions. Let's try this. Go home. Go home. Open notes. This is a new note, and we're going to try phonetic suggestions, living or live on the iPhone. And I've not been able to see the suggestion show up, but you'll see this is actually working. There's also a voice control guide where you can learn tips and tricks. So if we go back, go to settings, you'll see we have a voice control guide. It will teach you how to use this. You can get started. It shows you how to use dictation, text editing, and navigation. So this has been enhanced quite a bit and should be helpful for those that use it regularly. I've heard quite a few people that use this want different things such as phonetic suggestions and more. So let me know what you think of this if you use voice control. Under hearing, if maybe you have a made for iPhone hearing device, it will now pair directly to Mac and allow you to customize it for your hearing comfort. So you can have that full customization once Mac OS Sonoma is released. Additionally, if we go back into our settings, under switch control, there's a new option if you have switches set up. If you have a switch set up, you can turn any switch into a virtual game controller. Then you can play it on iPhone and iPad with switch control. So you no longer need a separate game controller for that. Also, one thing I think will be very helpful for those who are sensitive to maybe rapid animations is under the motion setting, we have the option for animated images. You'll see it says control whether images animate on web or on the web and in apps. You can disable this or enable this and you can pause it on its own. That way it won't play those rapid images and that works with GIFs or GIFs and in messages in Safari. So that will be really nice if you're using any of these features. Additionally, if you're using voiceover, so maybe you're using voiceover with Siri, this option has been enhanced this time around where it will sound more natural and expressive, even when it's at higher rates of speech. So you can customize the speed range. So speaking rate, and you also have the option for 0.8x up to two times speed. So that should be much better this time around where it sounds much more natural than it did before. So that's been enhanced with iOS 17. And that is everything that they're bringing to iOS 17 for accessibility. All of those same features carry across to iPad, but again, with that point and speak option in magnifier, you will need a LiDAR sensor for that to work. Other than that, most of these features should work for you. So I think some of them are really great. Personal voice sounds great. Maybe I'll try it again and see if it will sound more natural, but let me know what you think about all these accessibility features in the comments below. I think personal voice, many people were a little concerned about, but I think it sounds great. It takes long enough to create that it's not easily replicatable. But again, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Of course, the wallpaper will be linked in the description as it normally is. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.